Hello and welcome to another Filter Great tutorial. My name is Leighton and in this video we're going to be learning how to create some of the most popular video transitions seen on YouTube today. I'm talking about the object wipes, the luma fades, and the zoom in zoom out transitions. You can create these transitions with many different techniques and many different programs, but this video today will specifically take a look at how to do it in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Now a lot of people find that these transitions are overdone, especially in travel videos, but the fact of the matter is that you need to be able to use these transitions and understand these techniques in order to establish yourself and show that you are a competent and knowledgeable video editor and producer. So I hope that you understand these techniques I'm about to show you today, uh, take in the information and hopefully create your own transitions that everyone else will be wanting to understand and trying to figure out. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm in Premiere here, I got a couple clips we're going to work with today. Uh, the first technique I want to go through is the object wipe. So this is when something passes through the screen from left to right or right to left. See this tree here and covering the entire screen. So what you're going to do is separate one side of the screen and you're going to have the next clip and this tree here is going to act as like a, a barrier. It's going to separate two clips. Cut it right at the end, delete that and then I'm going to have this one after. So same location, different clips. So the first thing you want to do here, double click and get to your effect controls on this clip here. So for this technique, we're going to be using the pen tool in order to create a mask. Turn the whole left side of this tree here black in order for us to get rid of it and put the next layer behind it. So let's get to the very first frame of behind the tree here. We'll start here, right there. So you want to click this pen tool here on the under the opacity. Just go ahead and click that. It's going to create its own mask here. And what you can do is just click and create points. You want to follow the line of whatever your object may be, if it's a tree, if it's a sign, if it's um, maybe a car passing by. So you just want to follow the line here. Go maybe over to here. You can adjust this too. Bring it all the way down and then reconnect it to the beginning. You can twist it a little bit and move it around. So as you can see, this mask has created this whole screen black, which is not what we want. We want to hit the invert button here. And then just like that, we've changed it up. All right, so that's good enough. You can also adjust the feather here, which makes it a little, little softer, not so harsh if you made a bit of a mistake or your, your line that you're following isn't 100% straight. So from here, we go to the next frame. Just click this button right here, track, select, mask, move forward one frame. This is a very tedious process where we're just going to keep redoing what we just drew. Move this over, move this up a little bit. So as you can see, it's just going to be a lot of this, but just make sure everything is black. So how precise you want to be all depends on how much time you want to put into this. If you really want to take your time, it's going to be a lot more accurate, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to go through pretty quick here and um, I'll fast forward it for you. So something I forgot to do at the beginning was actually set a starting keyframe that doesn't have the mask in it. As you can see, it kind of comes in early here. So all you gotta do is find the point where it, just before it comes in, just click and just move the whole mask to the left so it's not in the way. That's the easiest way of dealing with it. As you can see, starting at the beginning of the clip, we come through and there's our mask. It blocks off the entire left side of the screen. Make sure you save what you did because you don't want to go through that again. And the next thing you want to do is bring your clip over, raise this one up, and put whatever your next clip is going to be under it. So when you play it out, the black just turns into the next clip. Show that again here. Just like that. Now this transition works better if it's a quick moving, a wipe past the object. It's a lot easier if your object is straight and you can just draw nice straight lines the entire time. Like I said before, if you want it to be more accurate, it'll take more time, but just put on some headphones, carve out a good half hour to really fine tune it, and your wipe will look a whole lot better. So there you have it, one more time, nice and smooth. So that is the object wipe technique. The next one we're gonna be looking at is the luma fade, or the gradient wipe, or the highlight, sky replace, whatever you wanna call it. So the effect that I'm gonna show you here in Premiere is using the gradient wipe transition. You can take this into After Effects and really fine tune it, adjusting the exposure to make it exactly what you want, but this is definitely the most simple technique that's gonna duplicate the look you're going for. I'm in the Effects workspace here. You can change that by going up to Window, Workspaces, and just go down to Effects. Um, it's a lot easier, especially when you're doing transition work like this. So all you gotta do is search Gradient, and you're gonna use the one under Video Effects, not the one under video transitions. Just make sure you're doing this one here. All you do is click and drag it onto the clip. I've got a clip with some waves here, which is the 
classic luma fade clip to use you're going to want to lift this up above your clip uh, up to you how much you want it to overlap this is probably good enough for me so it's a clip skateboarding on a bridge and then it's going to turn into waves we're going to be using keyframes here so if you go over to your effects controls of your clip you can see here the gradient wipe has been added but we just need to add keyframes and just really turn this thing on so let's go to the very beginning of this this clip here we're going to click this little toggle animation button which is going to set a keyframe so click this keyframe and we're going to put in a hundred so that just means that the entire clip is going to start completely opaque, meaning that you're not going to be able to see uh, the waves yet. Uh, we're going to put another keyframe right about there, just when the first clip ends. So we're going to hit this add remove keyframe button here, which is the same place where we hit the stopwatch before. Click that and we're going to hit zero in this box and that's going to bring it out. So that's pretty much all you have to do. It kind of does it for you. If you play it out, this is what it looks like. The highlights start to show up first and then slowly fade everything else in, just like that. Uh, you can stretch it out, make it longer, uh, make it faster. You can change how soft the gradient wipe is just by going here, softness. Uh, you can go up, kind of turns into more of a fade or a blur. Um, I like to keep it at zero or maybe even just like 10. I don't know, up to you. It really depends on what you're going for here. Just like that. Nice, easy fade. And here it comes, nice and easy. Put some music to that, add some audio effects and just like that. I'm going to show you another technique for doing the same kind of transition here. You're going to want to go back up to your effects browser. You want to type in color key. And this is what you're going to be looking for. All you do is drag this, drop it onto the clip like before that you want it to apply to. So I've got a nice clip of some birds and some sky here. This is a, a nice aerial view. For this technique, we're going to be replacing the sky. You really want a nice bright sky or whatever you want it to replace it has to be very bright contrasty to the foreground or whatever you want to stay so as you can see we've got some hills here they're a little bit darker so you want to go over to color key here proves that we've added the effect and i'm going to use this eyedropper tool what this does is lets you click anywhere on the screen and it's going to figure out what color you want to change so i just clicked in the sky it's all fairly the same color here but in order to increase the radius we can just grab this color tolerance move it all the way up until you pretty much replace the entire sky uh, you can put a bit of a feather on it so it's not so sharp but again, really up to you of uh, how precise and how perfect you want this transition to be. So this whole clip is now, the sky has turned black, meaning that if we raise it and put it over here, the sky from the clip below it is gonna show through. Just like the transition before, we're gonna be using keyframes in order to tell it when to start the fade and finish the fade. So probably the easiest way is to either, just to overlap this clip, however much you want it, however long you want the fade to go for. So we're using keyframes to initiate the fade, nice and easy, so it's a nice seamless transition. Add some keyframes by clicking this toggle animation stopwatch thing here. So click that, click that for the color tolerance as well as the key color. So the keyframe tells the clip specifically how you want the effect to be applied at a certain point of time in the clip. So I'm going to add keyframes here, both to key color and color tolerance. So I'm going to click on the keyframe color tolerance and I'm going to bring that all the way down to zero. So as you can see when we go through this, there's a nice gradient fading effect from the first keyframe set to the next. Now if we go before where we want our transition to begin, we can see there's a little bit of the effect added to the sky. We don't really want this to happen. Quick and easy way of dealing with this is just take your blade tool, cut the clip, bring it down. All you have to do is just click the FX button beside the color key effect for this clip and it's all gone. So you've got a nice clean effect where the sky just disappears slowly and then the rest of the clip follows. You can extend this as much as you want, stretch it out, uh, and if you want to get rid of the foreground, same way you got rid of the sky, you can go back to this technique here, use the gradient wipe, and that will get rid of your foreground as well. So just these two techniques together create the nice luma fade. Okay, so finally we're going to be taking a look at how to do the zoom in transition. This is probably one of the most popular transitions I've been seeing in videos recently. There's so many ways you can do it, different techniques uh, using After Effects, using Premiere. But this way I'm about to show you is what I think is likely to be the easiest and it's in Premiere which is great if you don't have After Effects. So let's get into it. We're going to be changing from this wide shot of the bridge and it's going to zoom in to the skateboarding shot which we used before. We're gonna be using keyframing techniques like before. So we're gonna count to the left of here. It really depends on what you want. If you want a faster transition, only go in like three, two, three, four frames. If you want a longer zoom, I would count in five or six, even up to 10 frames. But it really depends on what the look you're going for. I'm gonna go in four frames here just to see what it looks like. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four. 
and I'm gonna cut it right here with the blade tool. So I've got a split clip there, and the same thing we're gonna do on this side too. So we're gonna count in one, two, three, four, there we go. We're gonna click this clip here. It's gonna bring up the effects controls on the left. If that doesn't show up first, if it looks like this, um, just go over here to effects controls and bring it back up. We're gonna be adding keyframes here using the scale section. So go ahead and hit a keyframe at the beginning of this clip. Scroll all the way through to the end of this clip and hit this button right here, which is add another keyframe. So click that. So we got two here. Your first one is going to want to be set at whatever it was set up before. So if it's 100, leave it at 100. And then the final one, the one at the end of this clip, you can do 200. You can do 150. It uh, depends how aggressive you want the zoom in to be. I would recommend going 200 for the zoom in part of it. Just really initiate that quick zoom in. Since this is a zoom, our next clip is also going to have to zoom in. So using the same keyframing techniques, we're going to hit the scale button on this next clip. Hit that and it adds a keyframe right there as you can see. And then go to the end of this clip that you split up already. Click that. So you got your two keyframes. This one is one you're going to leave at 100. This one at the beginning here. Again, this is up to you. You can go 50 on the scale. You can even go to zero and have just a crazy out of nowhere zoom, but that's going to be a lot harder to deal with, especially when we're trying to replicate the edges and add a mirror effect to the outside. Now, as you can see, if we go through, it already kind of has the zoom look to it, except we have to deal with all these black borders around this clip here. All right, so you're going to want to go over here to the left bottom panel, find this little button that says new item, click that, and you're going to want to hit adjustment layer. Um, this has all the settings to whatever your timeline already is, so just let it be, and it's going to pop up right here. All you do is click, drag it, put it at the beginning, and then cut it at the end. So now you have an adjustment layer that's just going to be specific to this clip here. So up in your effects browser, you're going to want to type in mirror. You need to type that in there if you already know where the mirror effect is, you can just find it. Either way, grab it and drag it, and you need to drop it onto this adjustment layer. If you click on this, up in your effects controls, it's going to pop up right here, it says mirror. Now you're going to want to add this four times, you can either do all four now, or you can do one at a time. Might as well do all four now so you don't forget it. As you can see right here, one, two, three, four. So each mirror is going to be for each side of the clip. Let's go to the beginning, we're going to work with the first mirror, and you're going to want to click. So as soon as you click the mirror button, you're going to have a little circle crosshair up here. Just drag that over until it appears. Drag it over right to where the clip matches up. Roughly, it doesn't matter too much because it's only going to be four frames. It's going to be zooming. It's going to be really quick. So now that you've got that, you're going to want to hit this toggle animation button on the left here. We're going to add a keyframe. Add it right there. And you can also add the reflection angle by clicking a keyframe there. As we scroll through it, you can see the main clip is zooming in, but our mirrored adjustment is still there. So scroll through to the end of your clip here, just one frame before, and as you can see, if you go to the very last frame, it disappears and you can't find that crosshair again. So go before, click on the crosshair, and we're going to move it over until it is right on the edge, until you can't see it anymore, until you just lose it right there. And then all you have to do is drag this keyframe over. You can't really see it anymore, which is perfect. Don't forget to add a keyframe just for good measure at the end of the clip here just so that your reflection angle is locked. And so we got one side down, you're gonna be following this technique for all other sides. So for the next mirror, we're gonna go down here to reflection angle, we're gonna type in 180 for 180 degrees. The whole screen will turn black. Uh, all you have to do is click this crosshair and we're gonna drag it across the screen. And there we have it, you can see it. Link it up there, add a keyframe to the beginning, reflection center, reflection angle, all locked in. We're gonna do the same thing as before. As you can see, our mirrored effect stays where it is. We'll do the same technique as before where we add a keyframe and then move it just over to the left or right for that final frame. If you put it just off the screen, then your keyframe is gonna match up perfectly with your clip zooming in, making for a seamless zoom with mirrored outsides that you won't even notice. Add your reflection angle keyframe just for good measure in case you accidentally get confused and mess around with other keyframe actions. Now we use this mirror effect on an adjustment layer for each side in order to extend your clip in all directions so that you can start from a pulled out perspective and zoom in without making it too noticeable. And the zoom itself will be quick enough that very few people will be able to pick out 
Now depending on your clip, if it's more of a landscape clip, um, there won't be two sets of legs that people can pick out as easy. It really depends on the clip as for most transitions go. All right, so we're gonna go to the next one here. So now we've got both the sides set. Let's take a look at the top and bottom. For the angle, let's type in 90 degrees. That way we've got a nice reflection going here. Again, you can click this little crosshair and just drag it down to the point where it links up perfectly. Nice. So you, can, you can't really tell that there's a, a split line there. Let's just go ahead and add our keyframes. Toggle animation, toggle animation. So their keyframes are both right here. Scroll towards the end of the clip. Just one frame before the last frame. Again, click the mirror. Let's bring it down just out of frame. That's good. And then we'll drag the keyframe over to the last frame. And then add the reflection angle keyframe. You can drag that over there if you want to. So for the very last side, we're going to type in negative 90 on the reflection angle. Enter. There you go. So let's click the mirror button again here. Grab our crosshair, move it up so it links up perfectly. And yes, this looks kind of weird, but when you play it all through, speed it up a little bit, add a little bit of motion blur, it looked normal. It looked nice and seamless. So let's add our keyframes here. Reflection center, reflection angle. Play through. Go to our second last frame. Click the mirror again so your crosshair pops up. Bring it up. It doesn't matter where you're putting this left or right. Just make sure you have the, the Y axis, the north, south, all set and figured out perfectly. So you get it just out of frame. Right there is perfect. Drag this over to the final frame. Add your reflection angle keyframe. Drag that over too. And there you have it. It just kind of extends your clip and lets you do the zoom effect. So if you play through, see what it looks like. It does look a little bit weird just because of the, the dark top and the extra pair of legs. Uh, but you can change this by adjusting how far you zoom in. If you have a 2.7K or even a 4K clip that you're putting on a 1080p timeline, uh, it works a lot better because you actually have more of a clip to use. But this is a 1080p timeline and this clip that we're zooming into is 1080p. So we're gonna have to use this mirror technique. So finally, just to make it a little bit more smooth, I like to go up here into the effects browser under video transitions, under dissolve, Let's just throw a little cross dissolve in between these two clips here below, not the adjustment layer, but just the clips themselves. Make it a little bit smaller. It just makes a nice kind of a smooth, even more subtle look to it. So let's go back to the beginning of the clip here. Let's play it out, see how it works and zoom. So like I said, it really depends on your clip that you're using to zoom in. For the zoom out technique, all you have to do is do the exact opposite of what I just did. So put the adjustment layer on this first clip. Pretty much the same thing as far as the mirror effect goes. If your zoom is still not pleasing you, you can always go in, adjust the keyframes. So if you want it to be faster, you can adjust this keyframe, bring it in closer. That way it's a quicker transition. You need to do the same thing with this clip here, the one that you're zooming into. If you like, you can also hit R on your keyboard and you can make this clip faster. Also with this clip as well, same with the adjustment layer. Just make sure the adjustment layer follows whatever you're doing on this layer here bring these two clips in together and that's going to speed up the entire thing which looks a little bit crazy but it's all creative decision up to you i would recommend taking some time figure this process out understand keyframes maybe you can figure out your own technique of how to zoom in zoom out or maybe you can create your own never before seen transition before and put it out there for the world to see and then everyone will be making tutorials on how to do your video transitions so once you've got all your video transitions figured out and you got your timeline looking nice you may find that your video is still missing something. What you want to do is go to filtergrade.com for all the best video LUTs. This will make your footage look a whole lot better. It'll give your video a very unique, cinematic, beautiful look. It really takes your footage to a whole other level. I'd recommend any of these video LUTs. Uh, take some time, look at them, see which LUT pack works best for your video or your style of shooting. And as always, for all the best Photoshop actions, Lightroom presets, and video LUTs, check out filtergrade.com.